So a few years back, I took my first trip to Istanbul, Turkey, where I was working with some famous Turkish YouTubers. Strange as that might sound, these people taught me most everything that I know about broadcast and internet video. But what surprised me was their kind of insane approach to production. Just to set the stage, when I first arrived at my friend's office, one of the channel members had gone to the hospital because he was sprayed in the face with a fire extinguisher, and the others were rigging up a bowling ball tied to a rafter. And it was, as I was walking in, it was released to crash into a television set. Glass exploded everywhere. No one really had safety goggles on, but it was a fantastic time. So to learn a little bit more about what it's like to be a Turkish YouTube star, I want to introduce our Cult America viewers to my dear friend and former business partner, Mili. He has over 5 million subscribers on YouTube and as of late, 61 million views to a Turkish audience. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cult America. Hello, old friend. Hey, nice to see you. So, for the very first time, we are introducing Turkey's, in my opinion, most famous YouTube star. And I think, you know, having met you before you became famous, I would have never expected or guessed that you would be that person, you know, to star in movies and to be a, a huge entertainment figure for children. How did this all happen, Millie? Ryan, I'm getting older as you as you may can see, and um, as you can may see. Also, <laughs> I can speak. Uh, well, uh, things escalated quickly uh, in like well, in 2014. Uh, I before that, I was in corporate. Uh, I started my career in Price Waterhouse Coopers as as an auditor, <laughs> and then I met uh, my partner Arsan uh, in two, 2012. Uh, and I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Uh, he was on the content side, and I said, well, "Okay, whatever you do, let's do it together." And then we started off a global, well, like with a global-oriented dating site that didn't go somewhere, unfortunately. And then we started with MediaCraft. We want, as you know, we wanted to be um, an agency for YouTubers, where monetization was barely available in in Turkey in 2013. Mm -hmm. And in 2014, we t we told each other, okay, let's do, um, you know, let's create content other than to make money from other people's content. And then we started creating. I always uh, liked camera, uh, but I didn't know I, I wouldn't guess that things would es escalate uh, so much. What was the defining moment? What brought you to fame? Well, actually, as you know, when we started, MediaCraft invested in Turkey, uh, and back then nobody was investing in in YouTube uh, as we did. That's why when we started off, uh, we we created so much content. I mean, it was it was easier, easy times. I would say not easy. We were working really hard, uh, but uh, finding content and the value of production was. Thank you. You you just said, just said good things about our our value, our content creation value. But uh, what we did was we only keep pushing, creating, creating, creating. And at that times, um, you could cre create like short content and make money out of it. Mm -hmm. Not like these times. The competition was not there, and we were the first ones who did in that industry in Turkey. That's why uh, we grew so quickly. In, in two years, everybody knew us. I mean, our, our channel has uh, around 5 million subscribers, but I guess we gained these up, these uh, like two or three millions in the first two, three years, rather than the eight, the other eight years, I would say. Sure, and plus you have several other channels with over a million subscribers. So it wasn't just- Yeah, Apple. sure, yeah. No, no, I mean, the entertainment channels grew, uh, First, because we did a lot of content. We also have, I mean, for the people who, of course, don't know me and know my company, 
uh, an old company. Uh, we have we had and we have entertainment company entertainment uh, channels in Turkey that are really like famous. And also we have kids channels like baby nursery rhyme channels where we produce baby songs, and it's uh, I would say more profitable because uh, shelf life is longer when you create a good song and babies like they they always they hear it. Sure. But when you create a good entertainment like entertainment video, it's like there's a peak goes the other day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fun times. So I, it's. Uh... When I first found out that you were going to be uh, the face of the Turkish entertainment channels, I was really surprised and actually I was a little bit jealous because at that time I had taken a break from appearing in online video to focus more on business. But uh, the moment that it was announced was really surprising because we, we were all together in Germany, in Cologne, Germany, and uh, present was at the time Germany's largest entertainment star. It was a channel called YTD, you might remember. And uh, yeah, why did he? And they were talking about, you know, how famous and they really, really were famous. I mean, there would be legions of fans like around the office at all times to see them. And I'll never forget Arison saying, Millie's a YouTube star too. Millie's a YouTube star too. And until I visited you in Istanbul and saw that with my own eyes, I, uh, well, frankly, I didn't believe it. And it's a weird transition to go from a auditor at a, at a major financial institution to being a YouTube star. Do you have any regrets for making that change? Uh, well, my life, of course, has changed, but uh, in terms of career, uh, but I, I feel like I didn't change a lot. I, I, I don't feel like because I'm let's say famous because there, there are people who would like to take photo with me. I'm not more valuable than the day before. I mean, I, I really just feel the same. I, I don't regret it also because it's a really good journey and really good. Well, it has two, si two sides, uh, like everything. Mm -hmm. The fame comes with its price. Or on, on some blogs, uh, on some on internet, on websites, you can, of course, read about bad stuff about me, things I didn't do, or things misinterpreted stuff. Um, but I'm okay with that. Well, I don't have any regrets. Uh, and I think that um, if you like to create content like me, I mean, sometimes I feel like, okay, I mean, I'm working a lot. I shouldn't work that that much. But mm -hmm. what would I do? Then I think the boys out. Then think I, I. Then I think, okay. I mean, if I wouldn't do, it, I would probably create content anyways. So I, I'm a guy who likes to create content, and that's kind of also my business. Uh, I would definitely need uh, people uh, to share things I create. That's why, and this career suits to, to my uh, what I want to do in life. But I've uh, in in the process. It wasn't always easy. Sometimes, sure. I mean, there was some time a, a, a lady came to, to me because uh, her daughter uh, just hugged me in the street. And she was like, how, how, how does she know you? Uh, as if I'm oh, like, the, no. uh, yeah, <laughs> as if I knew the girl, like the, uh, I, I'm like, no, I don't know her. And probably she knows me. And I think you also should know uh, who your daughter knows because I mean you're the mother I, I was like getting nervous about some uh, mothers but nowadays I feel right now better uh, it, it, yeah I mean I just accustomed to it because it's been like eight, nine years in that period so so, so it's usual it's normal I'm a, I'm a senior I'm a, I'm a I am you say I'm a senior influencer in Turkey <laughs> definitely right now I'm not on the top of the list but uh, I feel like the like you know, in Turkey, there is something called Yeshil Cham. It's a kind of a old movies where anybody, a, a, anybody knows these guys, but some of them die poor. But anyways, I mean, because anybody knows these guys. In Turkey, many people know me because at least they, they watch a video, at least, I would say. Yeah. But th that doesn't mean I'm super, super influenced, super hype. That doesn't mean that like mm -hmm. that. Now, you guys had such a peak of success, and just just to really uh, underscore here 
what I'm talking about. After having appeared in several of your videos, you know, I met your fans in the Istanbul airport. So it's like uh, the magnitude of that for me was really amazing. And Turkey is not a small country. So uh, it also seems like there would be a lot of uh, barriers to cross in order to find yourself in that kind of spotlight. But there was a kind of very, very tragic part of the story. And I don't know if you can talk about this around the time that you released your movie. And I don't think that we ever discussed this. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? Are you able to actually? Of course. Uh, I mean, I, I think about that uh, a lot. And probably this is the first time I'm, think I'm talking about it. And English, <laughs> both like a big combo. Well, um, so when we started in 2014, uh, before um, I entered the in front of the camera scene, uh, I was co-founder of the company with Arsan and also the editor of the company and also the producer of the company. Like we were, two, we were two, two, three people, and we we hired. Uh, so we went to ca cast. How do you say casting agencies? We yeah. went to cast. Ca ca yeah, we went to agencies and met a uh, gem. Rest in peace. So, um, he, so the 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 first day he. It was like a training day, well, like a demo day. We're trying to um, find out whether he could do the job because we're trying to. It wasn't that difficult, but I mean, we would, we we didn't we didn't know what to do. So we were taking some global like videos and trying to replicate them in Turkish. And Jem was so successful uh, for him. It took like two two minutes, three minutes to just grasp the concept behind behind it and just may make a show a video out, out of it uh, and our also views uh, were really good with jam we, when we started off uh, we were pushing the content uh, but with the after six months seven months um, there were some disagreements like the in front of the camera mindset and our mindset we want so we we find out that for the company, it's more beneficial when I enter also the, the, the so we we found out that not only Jem, but all the me and all the crew um, behind the camera needs to be uh, in front. So when a person leaves, when he wants to leave, if something happens, uh, then we we still because we invested in that channel. You can continue your business, uh, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, if you want to scale, I mean, you can't be like one 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 man show, definitely. And by the time uh, me was in front of the camera, uh, we hired also other people, successful people, in front of the camera. And then um, some stuff happened. Um, there was an incident that uh, some fans cursed Jem in a live stream, and then he cursed back. And the other day. We just wanted him to say, I'm sorry to our o the audience. And then he said, no, that's my audience. That That's not all your audience. We said, no, that's our audience. And then we had a talk and he wanted to leave. And he left. Uh, and by the time he left, we were in our peak, by the way. Yeah. Uh, we continued. He continued also in different environments, in different places. I mean... There were legal stuff we could, I mean, against the competition, we didn't care. We didn't do anything. We just let it stuff happen. Uh, but in other parts of the world, we continued. And uh, two years, so we, we didn't talk um, a lot. I mean, we didn't talk. Uh, and then uh, with a different cast, uh, different people, uh, because we, we continued what we did, uh, on, in, in these two years and then uh, we produced a movie uh, the, the movie of, of our YouTube channel oh, in yeah, like it was a cinematic theaters. release it was in the movie theater yeah it's a, Big it's deal. a, yeah, it's a movie yeah right uh, and uh, before the gala uh, the day so Jem committed suicide so uh, that that's a, that's a very tragic um, yeah, thing I'm, I'm getting, that was I'm getting goosebumps I mean, just recalling yeah, that is yeah. the and, worst and thing. I was, uh, I was always criticized. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I can't also blame people. Uh, I was uh, always criticized that I wasn't, uh, I didn't uh, go to his funeral, but I, I, I attended and organized the gala event. 
uh, still people are writing stuff about that. I mean, they they have the right to, to write it, but um, I mean, that, that's history, and I'm sorry about it. Can I ask you? But, can can uh, I ask you why sure. why you didn't go yeah. to the funeral? It was the same day with the gala, and we had to promote. We had to promote the movie in in different. Uh, movie theaters and I, I, I gave a promise and like 200 people worked in that movie and also I, I when I will talk to the producers I felt like and they felt like uh, the best option I mean that has nothing to do right now with us because that, that I mean two years ago he left the company I mean we don't have anything sure, to, to, to do I mean I mean but uh, in a matter of respect I mean if if I mean if it would be right now, I would say I don't want it to be again. But I mean, I wouldn't behave like that. But I mean, maybe I was younger. I don't know. Yeah, yeah but I, Amelia, I was, yeah. I don't really think that you behaved wrongly per se. I mean, he was a he was a troubled guy, and there would be something really, uh, to me, disturbing about having a you know the big star that continued the success that made the movie show up at the guy's funeral when he so tragically felt. That he wasn't even worthy to live because I, I think that his success couldn't continue on the same level. And this is like, um, it it really frightens me when I think about people getting famous in this way, and uh, like associating that fame with their personal value, because it goes away in a second and it's gone, you know. And um, poor Jim, he didn't realize that uh, actually it, it it doesn't mean much. I mean, also, we don't know about why did that happen. Uh, why did, did that happen? Why this did happen? Uh, I mean, in ti timing perspective, it's really close to what we are doing. I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's difficult to talk about. And I, I still um, don't know how to react. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, for years, I didn't talk about that. Um, people wrote things about me everywhere, but I always said, okay, that's the um, diff difficult part of being famous. So yeah, you're so open absolutely. to comments and you, you can say, okay, you can, you can just say whatever you want. Uh, that's okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad and thankful that you opened up to me about it. I'm in a way sorry that we never discussed that in person or off camera, but it was... It was one of those topics that was a little bit too hard for me to um, even come by when we were spending time together. Um, but with that, Millie, let's move on and discuss some of the uh, more crazy things you guys have done over the years. So if we go back to the intro of this episode, I discussed um, you guys went through a little phase with smashing things. <laughs> you were... Smashing a bowling ball into a television set. Uh, you used a chainsaw to, to destroy another television. What was that all about? And uh, were you concerned for your safety? Did people like it? People definitely liked it. So <laughs> what people like, what people like is, as all of us know on YouTube, uh, they want to see, they want to watch the extreme, extreme. Uh, that that that's the word I would say. The most, the tiny, the less, the little, the biggest, the farthest. Or how to say? I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, back then we were doing uh, like trouble videos, uh, dangerous videos. Some of them were reaction videos, but I'm not so not reaction like chemical reaction videos. Yeah. Uh, we don't know any anything like the <laughs> what we were com what we're combining there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the first two, two, three years, we did that a lot. But then uh, we said uh, something is going to happen bad. And we discontinued uh, to do on that level. Because in our office, I mean, I wasn't alone. I mean, there are people uh, also in front of the camera and uh, dealing with an uh, um, accident in, in, the, in, uh, in a company's something we don't want, we don't prefer. Yeah. Uh, but we did, a, did these kind of really, that's the, I mean, the, I think that content brought us to somewhere. 
there's still people who like the dangerous stuff that have fun to them. Yeah. Um, but I, a couple of times we were burning the office, really. I mean, oh, we have the footages of, I mean, something's burning. Like actual fire. And we, yeah, we're actual fire. We, we, I saw with my own eyes the actual fire. We, slowly, slowly, we said, okay, let's take back. Nowadays, I mean, since two, three years, I'm not super happy with that also. Uh, since two, three years, our channel switched to a, a more food-based channel. Mm -hmm. where we do a lot of food challenges mm -hmm. once we we learned uh, two years ago for three well, i guess three years ago that uh, people watch people eating uh, we started with a lot of eating stuff and i yeah. i will i get fat uh, and <laughs> that's also dangerous by the way but at sure. least long long term dangerous well uh, one of our viewers here has commented that uh he says hey ryan uh, you should definitely have Millie over in Krakow, which is a, one of the most beautiful cities in Poland, for some vodka challenge in the heart of Kazimierz. Kazimierz is actually the Jewish, former du Jewish district of the city, and uh, I don't know if you're, I don't drink, but are you a drinker? Why not? Yeah, okay, well, there you what? go. So <laughs> when you come to Poland, whoever this guy is, uh, contact me. Millie and I are going to be there, and uh, I'll film the whole thing. Sure. It'll be very comedic. You know, I recently uh, started to take a new approach to my diet because when I was out filming, things for television, rather, everywhere I went, people would give me the entire restaurant menu to film, of course, mm -hmm. and to show. Mm -hmm. But I was raised in a way that you, you can't... Um, you can't waste food, so you have to clear your plate. And so I was also getting, well, pretty fat. And um, it's a really, really difficult thing to keep under control when you're making these eating videos. Um, but in addition to that, the only times I've ever vomited on camera was because of food challenges. So there, I actually vomited on camera on two occasions. Uh, the first occasion, we were taste testing Belarusian dehydrated fish. It was the most mm. disgusting thing, It the, the stench and the texture. So I puked on camera there. The second time, we were doing a kind of game show. Actually, it was on a channel that was inspired by your channel, so this wouldn't happen if not you. And the Which loser would, uh, hashtaggy it was called, but the, the mm. loser would have to actually um, taste ghost pepper, like ghost pepper sauce. I won, I didn't have to do it, but I wanted to give solidarity to the rest of the team and I took a big spoon and ate it, you know, thinking it wouldn't be a big deal. I ended up uh, being sick, unfortunately, on camera. So twice I vomited on camera. Uh, can you tell me about some of the more bizarre things you've tasted or if you ever had any accidents like that? Uh, there was a fruit called durian, I guess. Oh, the yes. Durian. The Indian, I guess. Yes. Oh, there, was a, there was a paste of it. And... Uh, well, I mean, I mean, pr maybe it's not that bad. I, I'm sorry, like Indian brothers, but that time <laughs> the the whole office, it was it, it was really bad. The one time was that the yeah, o o always the spice challenges. Yeah, one once we went to the hospital for those <laughs> because it was the world's hottest. Who, 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 did you go to the hospital or your friends? I mean, we we brought a friend there. I mean. I also ate, but I, he, I mean, in Turkish, there's uh, something called reflu. How do you say? I don't know they, that you have uh, something in your acid, uh, your uh, like acid reflux, if, maybe it's like coming yeah, up. Yeah, reflux. Yeah, that's the yeah. reflu means like reflux in Turkey. Yeah, uh, I guess our guy had a re reflu, a reflux, and uh, that's why he was more um, sensitive, uh, sensitive about that spice. Um, we ate a lot of stuff from all over the world, I would say. Uh, I mean, I didn't only taste here, but also went to abroad. Uh, I, I liked uh, deer meat uh, in Norway. Okay. I guess that was great. Sorry, okay. deers. <laughs> uh, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, um, before we wrap this up, I'd like to just touch on uh, a few more things about your experience, uh, more specifically of what it's like to make um, YouTube videos in a country that's sometimes politically turbulent. So when you guys joined MediaCraft, uh, I remember that the Turkish government blocked YouTube. It was a big thing. 
Uh, you started uploading I'm... videos on, on Daily Motion at that time. Uh, yes. So, okay, one question. Uh, did you look at all like all the weekly uh, meetings or do you have a wonderful uh, memory? Which one is it? I have a, well, yeah, it's complicated. It's not one or the other. I mean, it, wonderful. It's, it's changed my life like in ways that I couldn't even imagine. Um, I don't mm -hmm. even know who I'd be if, you know, if we didn't work together and, and, and do all this, but it wasn't without challenges, you know. No, no, you, you, because you remember all of the stuff. I was like, that was 10 years ago. How come you can't remember that YouTube was blocked in, in which car? Well, wow. Well, anyway, well, sure. No, that, that was a, that was a big deal. I mean, you guys had just invested, uh, so much in, in starting your company and, um, then That's the government true. blocked it. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of it a disaster. It. it was a big disaster, but yeah, it wasn't only that. You know, you, there there were other issues. There was the coup. I remember talking to Arison. He told me because it was watching it in the media it looked mm -hmm. very scary. He said he could hear airplanes mm -hmm. flying around with, he said with loud engines. So it sounded very scary. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that it's it's like uh, it's a little more complicated there sometimes, and it might be where I am making videos. Well, what is what is the reality? You're in Turkey. Okay. Um, I mean, I. Anybody can like the government, not like the government, but Turkey is, I would say, not a very unstable country. Too many negatives. Like, is it stable yeah. or not stable? Ah, too many. I mean, I feel safe in, in Turkey, uh, and I, I really love Turkey and my country. And uh, I feel like it's full of also potentials. When you do your job really good, uh, I think you can earn money in Turkey, but not, of course, compared compared to, compared to other countries. Our CPM is, is low and has been always very low compared to A other CPM countries. CPM is what the amount of money that you earn per 1,000 views for, for anyone yeah, who might not Yeah, that's know. true. Sorry. So uh, if I get the same view, if I would get the same view in Poland or, I don't know, in, in States, for example, with my children's channels or entertainment channels, uh, I'll be super rich, maybe. In Turkey, I'm not super rich. Uh, in Turkey, uh, okay, I'm 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 okay. Thank you, God, for giving me all of this. But um, so that that's one thing. In terms of political stuff, it, the, YouTube was blocked in 2014 when we started in March. Uh, the reason being was uh, they said there was some videos about the founder of the country Atatürk that YouTube didn't erase that. We never know, we never knew actually what happened there because I don't know. Uh, and they opened up it in, in one, one um, month. Mm -hmm. That they didn't happen, I, I guess, again. Or if that happened, it was only for a couple of days. So I, I don't think that they would block anything um Again, I, I hope. But right now there will be uh, elections in Turkey uh, in, in May uh, and it's going to be big. So Turkey is in transition right now. We don't know what's going to happen. Maybe Mr. Erdogan is going to get elected again or not. In both, in both cases, there will be people be, will be happy and will be not happy. So that, that um, is, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen, but it, it's not like I don't feel so. I don't know how do you say I don't feel myself in danger, but we don't know what's going to happen. So let's see. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, media is famous sorry. for framing things in a much more extreme light. So uh, I, I could easily believe that it's not as bad uh, as they they but, paint it in the in the news, it, of course. And, well, if the question is, how do you feel about doing business in Turkey? I would say Turkey is politically more stable, but economically it's not very stable. That's why mm -hmm. long-term investments are a bit difficult to, to know. I mean, if you're like, if you're going to buy an Apple, I would say, computer uh, for your production stuff next year and you plan that, you don't know how much you're going to pay in TL because yeah. there's inflation, the currency. Uh, it's a difficult market, but also full with full of opportunities. Also, I mean, sure. 
No, it's. I mean, it's it's an amazing, incredible place. Uh, don't don't get me wrong. It's just uh, w when I visited there, uh, there were a lot of those attacks happening, and so there was a mm. a kind of question in the in the back of my mind. I remember Arison actually told me that, you know, it's you're going to be safe, but there's a lottery happening here, and now you hold a ticket. That's what he said. And uh, when I would take the tram or. The, just uh, go somewhere in public transportation. You always had that notion in the back of your head. But in the United States, it's, mm. uh, in my opinion, it was very much the same thing because you know, the shootings and uh, a lot mm -hmm. of uh, very difficult political um, things that go on. But Americans just say, well, we're the best country in the world, and end of story. So, you know, we're like forcing this uh, kind of uh, the other extreme of, of PR. But um, yeah, Turkey was incredible. I love the tea. And uh, you guys had a worker in your office that would constantly bring tea uh, and sometimes coffee. Not and when anymore. My wife, yeah, not anymore, but there was. And when no, my no, wife we came, take, we take ourselves. No. Yeah. When my wife came, she actually, she had, she got over caffeinated. She had to lay down. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, but it's, it's an incredible culture. And um, I want to thank you, of course, for including me over the years. And I really, really do intend to come there and, and spend time with you in the near future. Are you guys in the same office, same location? Same office. This is your home. Just We just have a new neon here. Uh, yeah. It says, you shall me is don't get lazy, don't procrastinate, and don't give up. So Fantastic. Well, my neon says Cult America. And uh, it's That's good. I guess, I guess that we're the neon brothers. So, Mili, thank you so much. <laughs> For joining us today. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. All right, yeah, that was my friend from Turkey. I hope you guys liked it. I'll put some links to his channel. I know that we have some Turkish Cult America viewers on this channel on Cult America. Many people in Poland thought that there were bots, but hopefully, I've demonstrated today that uh, there is a connection, and um, it's one that I absolutely cherish. So, uh, thank you all for watching. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned.